What's up everybody? On today's project, I'm going to show you how to tile a shower pan. Specifically, I'm going to show you how I completed this shower pan tile installation. If you watch this video all the way through, it's going to show you a couple ways for cutting the tiles so that you can get a nice clean fit into the actual shower pan. It's going to show you a couple different ways for cutting the mosaic tile around the shower drain using a Dremel and a diamond bit. And finally, how to mix up and select a thin set and apply it to the pan so you're left with a nice clean tile installation. Let's get into the video. So I installed the Curdy shower system kit for my bathroom. So if you still need to complete that work, I recommend you check out my channel. I have a good tutorial on how to do that. So step one in this project is to get a proper dry fit in the shower pan. And with most mosaic tiles, you're gonna need to cut at least one side so it's flat along the intersection between the pan and the wall. So to do this, I really recommend you use a dry tile cutter. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for the one that I used, but go ahead and make your mark along your mosaic tiles and then position it within the tile cutter. So what I'm showing you here is how that cutter wheel will be pushed along your line to kind of score the face of the tile. And then you'll go back later on and apply pressure to break the tiles along the line that you previously scribed. So I just scribed the tiles. Now you go back and apply pressure to snap the tiles along the line you cut. You're gonna have the mosaic underneath that you're gonna to need to cut, so just grab some scissors or just some snippers and cut that off there. Now you're left with your nice flat line along the wall. So continue dry fitting the entire shower pan, and you'll probably have to cut at least three or four different lengths to, to get it to fit. So again, I'm running that tile cutter line over and then snapping them uh, just in place. So again, you're gonna to need to cut the mosaic mesh that holds all those tiles together and then you can go through and continue on with your dry fitting. The dry fitting process is probably the most important step here. So as you can see, my next mosaic section is gonna go over the shower drain. So you're gonna need a little bit of foresight to, to make sure you plan properly to get that positioned where you want it. Then you're gonna mark out the actual location of the shower drain. And the way I cut this out was with a Dremel tool with a diamond blade. And I found that this could give me my most precise cut and I was able to take care of that. I recommend you get a little bit of water to make sure that the, uh, the diamond blade doesn't overheat too much when you're cutting it. And here I just went and took care of cutting out that, uh, that segment that I marked. Now, this is gonna take a little bit of patience and it took a while to actually cut this out. And I actually ended up breaking one or two of those tiles, but that's not an issue because you can put in some individual tiles later on to substitute. So I'll show you how I did that in a minute. So I removed a couple of the hexagon tiles that um, aren't gonna be needed because that space is gonna be occupied by the shower drain in the next step. And as you can see on the top right, that was one of the tiles that I broke that I'll need to replace in the next step. So when you're okay with the fit, give it a quick dry test, and then you go ahead and move on to replacing any of the tiles that you broke. So here I am putting in some new unbroken tiles into the places where I previously had an issue with a broken tile. And then I'm just marking off, I'm freehanding it, I'm not being crazy precise here, just to complete the rest of that square. Once I had that mark, it was time to go ahead and make the cuts. So to cut the individual tiles, I actually taped the tiles to a uh, cardboard backer strip to make sure I didn't damage anything when I went through. And it was just a matter of taking my time and cutting that out precisely. You might have a little bit of cleanup work on the inside corner there when you cut it, but overall it looked pretty clean. So here I am positioning those and making sure I'm okay with how it fits and overall looks pretty good. So I'm positioning it now in the actual shower to make sure that visually I'm okay with it. And there I am dry fitting, putting the drain in place to make sure it looks okay. Cutting out the drain is definitely gonna be the toughest part of the installation, but continuing on with the dry fitting should be a breeze. And I'm completing that right there. Once the dry fit's complete, remove all of the tiles in a systematic manner so that you can put them back in the same order later on. Then you're going to need to select your thin set and mix it up. I decided to go with Schluter All Set in order to maintain my warranty, and then you're going to need to mix that up per the manufacturer's instructions. Be very careful to mix it up properly and in the right ratios to make sure that you have a good bond when you apply the tiles. So I used a 3 16th inch by quarter inch V-notch trowel to apply the thin set. And here I am, once it was mixed up, just applying it to the bottom of the shower pan. You can use a flat side first to kind of burn all the thin set onto the shower pan to make sure you have good coverage. 
and then you're going to go in later on and actually comb in the notches. Make sure you use directional troweling, meaning that all of the V notches are oriented in the same direction to make sure you have an actual good bond between the thin set and the tiles. So as you can see there, I'm combing in the notches, all running in the same direction to make sure I get that good bond later on. So once you've completed enough thin set work for the first row, go ahead and put your tiles in place, um, going with the same orientation that you perform the dry fit. I would recommend that you don't push the tiles down until you have at least one full row done so you can make minor adjustments to get the spacing in between the tiles and the grout lines correct and consistent. So depending on the shower system you select, your drain and grate might look a little bit different. But for the Schluter system, what you do is you take the, uh, the drain grate itself and provide some back butter to the actual grate. This way when you push it down in place, it'll have a good bed of mortar to actually set up on. So once you have a good layer of thin set on the actual drain grate, you're going to take your drain ring and insert it onto the collar. This is going to allow you to adjust the actual height of the grate once you have it in position in the pan. So once you have your mortar down in the pan, go ahead and push the grate, the collar, and the ring into place, making any slight adjustments in the thin set around the grate. At this point, I took my mosaic and slid it over the grate that I just installed just to make sure the fit was where I wanted it and, uh, and gave it a good visual test. And here I am doing the final modifications to make sure that I was okay with the positioning. And I, I had a lot of excess thin set, so I would recommend that you go a little bit lighter than I did here because I had a lot of cleanup work to do. So I went and inserted the two additional tiles from the ones that I broke previously, and then I made my final adjustments. Uh, again, I had way too much thin set, and I had spent a lot of time wiping it down to get all that excess out of there. As you can see, there's still a lot of cleanup work to be done, um, and I'm going to have to go back through and clean out all those grout lines. So, lesson learned, use a little bit less thin set, but overall the positioning is where I want it. So, I went and I continued with the rest of the tile installation, making sure that I didn't push in too much until I was very happy with the grout spacing and the orientation of all the tiles. And there I am completing the final row, again putting in my thin set, combing out my notches, all running in the same direction and then just putting the mosaic tiles in. You'll find it's easier to place the tiles on the existing tiles that you already put in and then kind of dragging the tiles into place as opposed to plopping it directly in the thin set. It's less likely to get stuck and you can get a cleaner installation in my opinion. So I'm installing the final mosaic sheets right now and making sure that all my spacing is still consistent and that I have a good gap in between the tiles and the shower walls. And then you're gonna do some fine tuning to make sure that no gaps opened up anywhere along your installation. And that's me checking now and doing some preliminary cleanup of that additional thin set. If you're a bonehead like me and you use too much thin set, spend the time now to clean all the grout lines, clean all the thin set off, because once it dries, you are in for a nightmare. So once the tiles have dried, the next step is to apply grout. We opted to use epoxy grout, and there's gonna be another video showing how we did that. I also have a video showing how I applied caulk to the seams around the shower pan in the wall. Please subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more projects in this DIY bathroom remodel. I'll be dropping new videos every other day or so. And also, if you wouldn't mind, drop a like down below for the YouTube algorithm and leave a comment if there's anything in this project you might have done differently. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.